First Chronicles chapter 9. Difficult reading here. Maybe a lot of scripture to look at. So all Israel is reckoned by their genealogy. And behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. And that's not necessarily what's written in the Bible either. The kings kept their own records with scribes. But we've seen enough names from Numbers to Chronicles. Who were carried away to Babylon for their transgression. Now verse 2 on, we're going to pick up after the captivity. After, ne well, during e Ezra and Nehemiah, when they come into the land. Now the first inhabitants that dwelt in their possessions in the cities, I mean the first ones would have been Joshua and them. And those were found in the book of Joshua, Caleb. Now the first inhabitants that dwelt their possessions in their cities, the Israelites, the priests, the Levites, and the Nephilims. Now the Nephilims, Joshua 9, 27, I said we're going to have to look up a lot of scripture who these people are. Joshua 9, 27. And not going through the whole chapter, but the Gibeonites heard about what happened to Jericho and the conquest of Joshua. Uh, I think AI after, yeah, AI after that. And they get fearful. And they say, let's get some men, let's get them in a wardrobe, let's get them ready for vacation Bible. We'll dress them up. We'll give them old stock. And they'll go to Joshua and say, well, look how long it took us to get here. And we fear thee. We want to get right with you. Will you make a covenant with us? And yet they were the people of the land that God said, get rid of. And Joshua and the elders made a covenant with them. Verse 27 of chapter 9. And Joshua made them, day, made them that day hewers of wood, drawers of water for the congregation, and for the altar of the Lord, even unto this day, in the place which he should choose. That would be Jerusalem. Jerusalem's not known yet. So what Joshua says to the Gibeonites, you're going to be, you're going to get our wood. You're going to get our water. And guess what? The captivity is over. They're back in the land. And First Chronicles 9, verse 2, there they are. That's how they got their names. I would probably name their family. Where they, I don't know where exactly they got the name. But the name would mean one given. That's what Nethanims mean. And they were the temple servants. Carried all the heavy burdens of wood and all that. So evidently what they'd done to Joshua, though they were the enemies of the children of Israel in the land, God is, here they are. And they will show up, we're not going to look it up, but Ezra 2.43-54. And in Ezra 8.20 they show up. Which is the same time period, but they're mentioned in Ezra. Chapter 8, verse 20. They deceived. <laughs> and look where they are now. They feared God. <laughs> so, verse 3. And in Jerusalem dwelt the children of Judah, and of the children of Benjamin, of the children of Ephraim, and the children and Manasseh. There, though the land has been divided by Lot, not when they come back under Ezra and Nehemiah, under Ezra, they all go to Jerusalem, to the city of Jerusalem, and they're living there. Nehemiah hasn't come up and built the, the, the walls yet. And what they got to do is they got huddled together to protect themselves. Verse 4. Uthai, the son of Amminhud, the son of Amri, the son of Imri, the son of Benai, the children of Perez, the sons of Judah. Well, that's the line of Christ, Perez. And the Shilonites, Asiah, Asahiah, the firstborn, his sons. The sons of Zerah, Jeruel, and their brethren, 690. Okay, now the sons of Benjamin. Shau, the son of Mishnah, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hasaniah, and Abinaiah, the son of Jerohoam, 
And Elot, the son of Uzai, the son of Micarai, Meshalom, the son of Shephaziah, the son of Reuel. That's their great, great, that's the one that was named Moses' father in law. Look how that name's come back. The son of Abijah, of, of And their brethren, according to their generations, 956, all these men were chief of the fathers in the house of their fathers. So they're in charge. They're the leaders. They're the heads. All right, that was the Israelites. Now, verse 10, we're going to pick up the, leaf, the priests. Verse 10 to 13. And the priests, and you'll find this match, we won't go to it, but Nehemiah 11, 10 through 14, you'll find these names. And again, the names have been uh, spelled otherwise because of language, and people have different names. Same person, different names. And you can run them. And the priests, these are the ones that return. Jedediah, and Jehoharib, and Jacknip. All right, this is one of the principal people we're looking at right now. Azariah, who's he? He's the son of Hilkiah, the son of Mishalim, the son of Zadok, the son of Merileb, the son of Ahitub, the ruler of the house of God. Now, do we know how to spell? Do we know words? That does not say high priest, does it? And yet, scholars, when I look through the thing, oh, it can't be the right thing because Joshua was the high priest. It don't say high priest. It says a ruler. And there were two priests all the way up to Jesus' time. There are people who, you know what? The high priest says, hey, this is your job. And we'll see rulers coming up even longer in this chapter. So it doesn't say high priest. It says a ruler. He's in charge. Verse 12, and Ananiah. And Ananiah. Another person. Who is he? The son of Jehoram, the son of Pasher, the son of Machachita, and Maserai, another person. Who is he? The son of Adiah, the son of Jazhera, the son of Meshulam, the son of Misha Hilnith, the son of Immer. Now those are three main priests that are mentioned when they come back. They're not the high priests, they're priests. They are of Aaron. They have to be of Aaron. Remember, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. We'll do with the Levites in verse 14, but 13. And their brethren, heads of the house of their fathers. So here are the priests. They're actual the priests. And they're grouped by their father's names. And there are people over the houses. And 1,703 score. Very able men for the work of the service of the house of God. So they had the light, right lineage. They are sanctified. They are, meet all the law standards to do what needs to be done in the house of God. They're not defiled. Okay, the Levites, verse 14. Now we do have a little problem with the Levites. Ezra 8. The book of Ezra, chapter 8. And a remarkable note here. Ezra builds the temple. Okay, Nehemiah builds the city. And where are we going to start with this one? Ezra 8. I got 15. Well, yeah, Ezra 8, 15, a good spot. That's a paragraph mark. Kind of interesting here. Ezra 8, 15. Now remember, they're in Babylon. And they're ready to go back to Jerusalem. I've gathered them together to the river that runneth to Ahia. And there abode with we in tents three days. And I viewed the people. I'm looking at the people. And the priests. They're Levites. Who are the priests. The sons of Aaron. And found there none of the sons of the Levites. Priests or Levites? Uh, where is the tribe of Levi? Then I sent for Eliezer, for Ariel. That's the first time that word shows up. Ariel. For Shemaniah and Elizabeth. And for Jerib, for Elethan, or El Nathan. And Nathan, Nathan El Nathan and, Na and for Nathan. And for Zechariah and for Michelin, chief men. 
and for Jorah, for the Ethelim, men of understanding. All right. I sent with them commandment unto Edo, the chief of the place, Pasifa, and told them what they should say unto Edo and his brethren, the Nethanimans, at the place of Kalithva, that they should bring unto us ministers for the house of our God. We need these guys for the temple. Where are they? So when we come over here to the Levites, verse 14 of chapter 9, Ezra had to gather them together. They weren't there ready to go. <laughs> kind of a little interesting. No. It's almost like, you know what? <laughs> the Jews today, are they really looking for the Messiah? No. Are they really wanting to go back to Jerusalem? No. Business is good in America. That's what they said in Germany. That's what they said in England. So verse 14 in Levite, Shemaniah, okay, who is he? The son of Heshbib, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, the sons of Merari. All right, he's a, and Bar, Bak, Bakar, Bakar, and Harish, and Gela, and Methaniah, or Methaniah, who's he? The son of Micah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Asaph, Asaph. And Obadiah, now that's not the one in the book of Obadiah, there's many Obadiahs. Who is he? The son of Shimei, the son of Gala, the son of Jeruthim, and Barakiah, the son of Asa, I like that name, the son of Elkiah, and that dwelt in the villages of the Neopathites. Okay. And the porters. Well, who are they? And we're going to look at the porters all the way up to 25. They're the doorkeepers. They're in charge of the gates. They would be your ushers in the church today. They would be your deacons. They would stand at the doors. And we'll look at this in a moment if we get there. So when you got a lot of wizardry and satanic games out there, whether they're board games or they're uh, you know, video games, they got the doorkeeper. And if you open this door, you'll get mystical things. Well, that comes out of the Bible, porters. And Jesus speaks about the porters in John chapter 10. It's the ones that open the doors. It's the ones that are in charge of the door. Today, we have electric porter. You step up to the door and it opens all by itself. That's one of the first jobs that started to go with. We used to have people that would open the doors for you. We used to have people that would sit in an elevator and make you go up and down. So, porters were, okay, number one man, Shalom, Akub. Number three, Talim. Number four, Ahilam. And their brethren. Shalom, the first man mentioned, he was the chief. So he's in charge of all these people. Their family, their brothers, are in charge of the doors or gates. Who hitherto waited in the king's gate, that we Shalom. He's in charge. He's a, so he gets the king's gate. He gets to meet the king coming in through the gate. And that's interesting because one day the king of the Jews is coming. Who's going to be at the gate waiting for him to come? And were porters in the companies of the children of Levi. Levi were judges in the gates. The city hall. So there were Levites sitting there ready to judge the people. And there were Levites there who were in charge of the gates. When they say, okay, it's the Sabbath, shut the gates. It would be the doorkeepers. Sabbath open, over, open the gates. would be the doorkeepers. We'll look at that in a moment. And verse 19, Shalom. Here's the guys in charge. The son of Kor. The son of Abishaph, the son of Koran, or Korah, and his brethren of the house of their father, the Korahites, were over the work of the service. Gatekeepers, keepers of the gates of the tabernacle. So, that tabernacle had gates, had doors. Here's men in charge. And their fathers, being over the host of the Lord, were keepers of the entry. Now, one of the greatest illustrations would be Uzziah. He goes into the holy place to offer to God the, the incense. He doesn't belong there. There would have been at least three gatekeepers, a minimum, the front entrance into the tabernacle, 
the one that enters in the holy place. Those gatekeepers were going, hey, priest, come here. we got a problem. And then the king at the king's gate said, the king has entered where he doesn't belong. We tried to stop him, but he's the king. So there were people in charge of the, of the gates of the city, gates of the temple, and I guarantee they didn't have little name tags and say, you know, gatekeeper. It's stupid. You know, I believe as Job speaks about having titles. And people just want titles because they want to be important. I had to say that. Verse Now, keepers of the entry. Now, verse 20. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, was the ruler over them, the gatekeepers, in times past. And the Lord was with him. Well, Phinehas has been long dead. So what God is showing us in chapter 9, there is, you hate your boss. Well, there are bosses in the Bible. There are men in charge of other men in the Bible in the tabernacle service. Now with his Phinehas, let's look what we have here. Number 31, 6. Numbers 31, 6. Look at a few verses with him. Number 31, 6. This little side note, so let's go look at who he is. And a few of the things they talk about. In Numbers 31, verse 6. Again, another boring book. No, not really. We've seen Numbers and Chronicles work together to get new information. And Moses, we know who Moses is, 31.6. Sent them to the war. There's a war. A thousand of every tribe. Twelve thousand. Then, as Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, the grandson to Aaron, to war with the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. Phinehas, you're going to go to war with him. Yep, you take the holy instruments and you take those trumpets. That's your job. You're in charge of those things. You are the priests of the war. And then Numbers chapter 3, verse 32. Numbers 3, 32. Everyone had a boss. The high priest had a boss, God. And Numbers 3.32, and Eleazar, the son of Aaron, Aaron's the high priest right now, the priest shall be chief over the chief of the Levites, and have the oversight of them that keep the charge of sanctuary. So Aaron's in charge of the high priest. Under him is, is Eleazar. And what we just learned, we're going to look at another verse, it'll be Eleazar's son. They are all in charge and have to give an account to God. Chapter 20 of Numbers, chapter 20, verse 28. So if you, you know, if you want to go start a church because you don't want to have a boss over you, you got to be crazy. And if you are the pastor of the church, you, know, <laughs> you got God over you. Numbers 20, 28. And Moses stripped Aaron, that's the high priest, of his garments. He's died, going to die. And put them upon Eleazar, his son. Well, the next one under Eleazar is Phinehas. And Aaron died in the hill. Uh, died there in the mountain, excuse me. So, here's the high priest, here's the high priest's son, now made high priest. And we know that Eleazar died, and then Phinehas has been made the priest. And you got this weird little note here that, ahem, this guy was in charge of this guy. This guy was the ruler of this house. This guy was the chief of this thing. The guy was chief of this. Oh, well, you know what? Phinehas was in charge when he was around, when Joshua came in. <laughs> Isn't that a little interesting, little P.S.? In case people don't like bosses. And in verse 21, it's weird. 17 to 19 are gatekeepers. And porters, Zechariah the son of Melchishemiah was porter. We're right back to porter again. 
he sticks in the Holy Spirit sticks in Finn has with the boss and okay we're going back to the port like somebody had a problem of the porters to be well who do you think you are well guess what Finn has our great 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 grandfather he was in charge too it's in the Bible go check the scriptures <laughs> Go check the numbers. Go ask for the numbers scroll, and they will show you. <laughs> and Zechariah, the son of Mishimiah, was porter of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay, that's the outer veil. All these were chosen to be porters, and the gates were 212. That's a lot. These were reckoned by their gene. They had to have a genealogy. They had to have a family record to stand at that door. Their villages whom David and Samuel, the seer, did ordain their set office. So, this, okay, that little note of Phinehas chapter 20, I mean verse 20, excuse me, that wasn't in the law as far as the porters. Phinehas was in charge of everything. Well, who does David think he is? Who does Samuel think he is? Holy Spirit says, okay. Finhas was in charge of everything. Now we have an office called Porter. Where would they need porters with that traveling tabernacle in the wilderness? And then that tabernacle that David saw out his window says, Listen, I want to build a temple. And Solomon builds that temple and you got great walls, you got great rocks and timbers, and there's there's a city and there's walls and there's gates. Well, now we need these porters, and David and Samuel set that office up. They sat down and you know what? Only these people, only this family can do that job. Now remember, when we start getting into the Mororites, the Kohites, and I forget the other uh, son of Levi, their jobs are all done once that, that temple is built. Once Aaron brings that ark into the most holy place and sets it down, no one's, they took the staves out. No one was to carry that ark no more. No one was to wrap up all the curtains and say, okay, we're moving. And those families that were designed of, of Levi, given by God, they were given new, one of the new jobs was, all right, you got to be porters of the city. You're still serving God. You just have a different assignment. So the porters were not found in the law. David and Samuel worked together. So they and their children had oversight Oh, boss, boss, of the gates of the house of the Lord, namely the house of the tabernacle by wards. So even in the tabernacle, this section is yours, that section is yours, that, and listen, in the temple, there were different, I'm going to say closets, different storage rooms, different doors to those. Yeah, there was someone in charge of all those. Verse 24, in four quarters were the porters toward the east, west north and south and their brethren which were in their villages so they had special villages were to come after seven days from time to time with them so they had a prescribed time you work seven days then your other brethren come seven days verse 26 for these levites what we just read the four chief porters, these are got four big bosses of the porters, boss of the porters, were in their set office. So here's a set office. They are the chief. And were over the chambers of the treasures of the house of God. So gold, silver, stone, the uh, offerings, the money. The chief porters were put in charge of that. And they lodged round about the house of God. So they're surrounded by the temple. Because the charge was upon them, and he opened thereof every morning pertaining to them. Somebody had to open up the tabernacle every morning. It was their job. And since they had to do that, they had to live around the tabernacle. Now let's see who came up with that. 1 Samuel 3.15. Kind of interesting. Scripture with scripture. Don't ever call chronicles and numbers boring, because they're not. Well, number seven. Number seven. <laughs> That's kind of. <laughs> but First Samuel three fifteen. Is it three thirteen? Three. I can't tell my Ryan. Three fifteen. Remember Samuel? 
he says, little boy by Hannah. And she says, Eli, I've given this little boy to God in all the days of his life. And Eli took him, the guy who had bad children. And they're in the tabernacle. They're living in the tabernacle. Here the point is, the candle goes out. God calls Samuel. No one else is supposed to be there. He goes to Eli three times. Eli should have had the first point that God speak. Well, besides the fact is, God spoke to him. And he wakes up in the morning. And what did I say? Verse 13, 15. Chapter 3, verse 15. And Samuel laid unto the morning. That's what we just read. And opened the doors of the house of the Lord. There it is. The first porter, the one who came up with the porters, is the one that had the porter job. He got up in the morning. Okay, doors open. We're ready for business. And he would probably have a specific time that he had to shut everything up, make sure everybody was out. You know, when I worked for grocery stores. You know, I had the morning. We had to make sure everything was all set up before the customers come in. Just stand outside the door. Okay, stores open. Open up the doors. Let them in. You better make sure you had the cashier. You better make sure you have everything set. And then I worked for the closing shift for the stores. And when we do that, before we shut the doors, I make sure everybody's not in the bathroom. Everybody's out of the store. All the employees are counted for. The, you know, all the cash boxes have been put away. And then once you do that, everybody's outside. Then you close the doors and we go home. That's what's going on here. If anybody was left in that tabernacle who didn't belong there and they found smoking in the morning because God got angry, it'd be the porter's fault. How'd that guy get in there? Oh, that's your job. That's your job. And you can take that all the way back to Samuel, who was a priest. The Levites, we read the other night. In verse 28, and certain of them had the charge. Okay, now here's another charge. Here's another duty. And certain of them had the charge of the ministering vessels. Cups, bowls, shovels. We've read all about those. The, the little stuff needed for the candles, the snuffers, the clippers, and a certain of them had the charge of the ministering vessels only for God's service. That they should bring them in and out by tail. It's an orderly fashion. Now, that's too much oil to bring in here, sir. That's not enough oil. That's their job. And believe me, for the service of God, remember, there were, there were, there were two sons of Aaron. They came, oh, we have fire. We, you're gone. And when you do the service of God, it has to be correct or God will accept it. So it has to be orderly. These people have to be on top of the ball. Verse 29. And some of them also were appointed to oversee the vessels. Make sure they're in the right spot. Make sure they belong where they go. Make sure they're clean. And all the instruments of the sanctuary. Now, you see that word sanctuary there? All right. It's 128 verses in the Old Testament. It's only four verses, four verses in the New Testament. And all those places are in Hebrews. So let's go to Hebrews 8 too. You know what Hebrews book is for, don't you? You would think that you would know who the Hebrews book is written to. In case you didn't know that. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 2. We'll go to verse 8, 1. Now these things which have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest, that's Jesus Christ, who is set on the right hand of the, of the throne of the majesty in the heaven. Sit at the right hand of God. A minister of the sanctuary. And the true tabernacle. Which is Lord pitch and not man. That's heaven. I just read today about a church. They're going to start a new church. And they call it the tabernacle. And another one calls it the temple. Those are not names for churches in the, in the New Testament. And we're not done. Chapter 9, verse 1. Hebrews 9, 1. Okay, 9, 1. 
It was 9-11. But 9-1, my, my writing's bad. And verily the first covenant, what's that? That's the Old Testament, right? Had ordinances, the law. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Keep the candles like this, burn this sacrifice, do it at this time, bring this animal if you sin. Of divine service, that's the priest doing the service. And a worldly sanctuary. <laughs> Probably that's where, to what I'm going to say. Remember that worldly sanctuary. Okay? We've got two more verses, but remember that. My sarcasm later. And in 9 2, next verse, for there was a tabernacle made. It's Moses. The first. Where was the candlestick? That's the holy place. The table, the holy place. And the showbread, the holy place. Which is called the sanctuary. Okay. And then the second, that's the most holy place. And then chapter 13, verse 11 of Hebrews. Hebrews 13. I mean, scripture was scripture, you would want, right? I mean, 13.11. Hebrews 13.11. We'll do verse 10 just to be. We have an altar, which they had no right to, to eat, which served the tabernacle. That's the priest's office. No one else was allowed to go in there. For the bodies of those beasts, the offerings, Whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest. We don't have a high priest today. For sin are burned without the camp. And then it talks about Jesus, verse 12. You say, why are you talking all about that, about the sanctuary and the chronicle? Are you not going to, to churches today? When we sit in the sanctuary, come in to have church in our sanctuary. Where's the candlestick and where's the bread? Where's the high priest? Uh-oh. I know some churches that have a high priest over Jesus Christ. Oh. Very be careful when you call your church temple or tabernacle. That's, those are not church names. And the sanctuary, do you dare to think that maybe your building, your worldly building... Is as great as God's heavenly abode. You gotta be careful. You gotta know what you're talking about. So verse 29 of First Chronicles 9, I had to say that. That was interesting to me. Instruments of the sanctuary and for fine flour and the wine and the oil and the frankincense and the spices. Everything that needed to be done. And some of the sons of the priests made the ointment of the spices. Only the priest could do that in the law. Now that job has been given to the priest, another set of priests, this is your job. Remember the law says you couldn't make anything else like it. And Mathiah, one of the Levites, see, it has to be Levites, who was the firstborn of Shalom, the Koharite, now we read that in verse 16, in verse 14, had to set office over the things that were made in the pans. What is that? Whatever they made in the pan, that is this guy's job. Now, there were some offerings were made in the pan. And one of the laws talked about things that were frying in the frying pan. Did you know that there was a guy in charge of, of the offerings that were made in a frying pan? There it is. Why? Because the law had to be specific. And other of their brethren... The sons of the Kohanites were over the showbread to prepare it every. Now, write that, mark that Sabbath down. All right? Because let's look at something here. We're going to look at a couple more verses here. Leviticus 24 8. Leviticus 24 8. Chronicles is not a boring book, I don't think. I hope you guys. Enjoy and get to new, learn new things 24 8. And I hope when you go through Chronicles again next time you read, oh wow, yeah, look at that. And maybe you find treasures and what I call nuggets. So, Chronicles said every Sabbath. And we're going to date the Bible. Ready? Leviticus 24, verse 8. 
every Sabbath, he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. Now what is that? Let's go to ver verse 5. Thou shalt take fine flour, and bake twelve cakes thereof, two tenth deals shall be in one cake. Thou shalt, see, you have to make that cake exactly. Thou shalt set them in two rows, six on a row, upon the pure table before the Lord. This is the holy place. Thou shalt put frankincense upon each roll, that it may be on the bread for a memorial, even the offering made by fire unto the Lord, every Sabbath. Now, are you ready for another nugget? 1 Samuel 21. And when they pestered Jesus and the disciples, Oh, you done it on the Sabbath. You're picking wheat on the Sabbath. Oh. 1 Samuel 21 1. 1 Samuel 21 1. How dare you heal a man? You know, they always thought Jesus was healing on the Sabbath. What did Jesus actually do to break the Sabbath? He didn't get a medicine bottle. He didn't put a, uh, the deception scope to his chest. <laughs> he didn't say with a thermometer open wide, say, ah, he just, okay, open your arm. <laughs> That's not really worked. But 1 Samuel 21 1. Then came David. We know who David is, right? We know who he is. To Nah. That's the first time that shows up, only because it's an important place. To Ahimelech the priest. Okay, there's a high priest. And Himlik was afraid at the meat ing. That's the first time meeting shows up. The first meeting is the priest and David. Isn't that interesting? And said unto him, Why art thou alone, and no man with thee? And David said to Himlik the priest, The king has commanded me a, a business, David, you're lying, and has said to me, Let no man know anything of the business wherewith I send thee. And what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. That's a lie. Now therefore, what is under thy hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand. Or what there is present. And the priest answered David said, There is no common bread here under my hand. But there is hallow bread. For the young men have kept themselves at least from the woman. Alright, we can stop. I mean, the rest of it is interesting too. Because you get... On what day was the priest supposed to bring that bread? It's the Sabbath. David left the castle or wherever the, the, the throne of Saul was. David left his wife's house. Remember the bolster? And he's walking all the way to the temple. <laughs> and he has the nerve to walk in the holy place. He's got to be in the holy place. Because here is the new bread ready to be put out on the Sabbath. And he's like, David answered the priest, verse 5. And said to him, of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out. There's nothing about not having anything to do with women. That law of that bread was to be only for the Levites, the priests. Nothing about men. And the vessels of young men are holy. <laughs> and the bread is manner, manner common. Yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. And the priest gave him the hallowed bread. For there was no bread there but the show bread, there it is, that was taken from before the Lord to be put hot in a day when it was taken away. In order to put that bread down and take away the old bread, it has to be the Sabbath. Ooh, with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes have a hard time like they did with Jesus, with David. Isn't that interesting? That's the Sabbath day. And God did not strike David down with fire and lightning bolts. <laughs> And I'm going to have the assumption that David walked into the holy place to get that bread. And I could be wrong about that. And maybe David walked through the porters. <laughs> well, about that one? I mean, it says David and Samuel. <laughs> Samuel, I think he's still living there. So, 32, first Chronicles, the Sabbath. So there's David. It happened on this Saturday, the seventh day. And these are, I mean, <laughs> David had, didn't David have the sure mercies of God that he could do what was outside the law? Six, six, no, the rest of them seven. God made things in six days, and the seventh day was the seventh. Rested. And other, okay, where are we? Verse 33. 
And these are the singers. Oh, well, we got singers. Chief of the fathers of the Levites. Well, only the Levites can be the singers. Who remained in the chambers free. So they had free rent. They had the office of singing, and David and Samuel said, up, we're going to pay you to do it. You have no rent. Free? I don't think so. Um, yeah, that, no, because I went through that. So that wouldn't have been the free time. First time. For they were employed. That's the first time that word shows up. Employed. What's the first employment in the Bible? Where Levites to be singers. And the only other place employed shows up is Ezra 10, 15. Let's go there. We're going to look at scriptures tonight. Ezra 10, 15. Let's take a look at that. It's been a while since I've seen that one. Usually I remember them. Ezra 10, 15. The word employed. Something that's coming very scarce in America today. Employed. Only Jonathan, the son of Asahel, and Jehaziah, the son of Tychava, were employed about this matter, and Michelin, so, and that you help them. Oh, th this is when the Hebrews have married women outlandish. And Ezra sets up, you know, we got to get, get rid of this. So here are men set up. All right. We, we got to make Noel this marriage. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Talk about employment in that one. That was in Babylon. That's when they come out. These chief fathers of Levites were chief throughout the generation. So the families had throughout the rest of the families this charges. These dwelt at Jerusalem. And we're going to stop there because we're going to pick up King Saul again. So interesting study, I hope. 